And welcome, welcome everybody. This is going to be pre-made dominant week eight. Prager, you among us team. They're 6-1 currently versus Oasis Revenant. They are also up there with five and two score lines so far. My name is Proof. I'm joined here on the casting desk with TDS. Obviously behind the scenes, behind the camera is going to be Rando Joe producing this segment to you. Already the pro draft has been started, you know, on both sides. You already see the bands coming through. Heavy index in, I guess, not heavy, but you see the Aphelios band. That's a marksman they don't want to deal with. Oriana as well as Irel on the side of the blue team. And of course, we got Oasis Revenant answering on the other side with the Ziggs band and the Camille. Yeah, a lot of concentrated picks onto much more comfort than just overall meta, Irelia, Filios, and Orianna, even though they are played by a lot of players, it certainly feels much more as a focused band than just an overall uh, a power, an overall super powerful OP champ band. And I think it's interesting to see. I think the only one that may, that seems much more broad would be the Camilla and the Lulu and the Six as well. But on the other side, it's much more focused. And it's interesting to see this because maybe they don't want to play against this or they have something up their sleeves that they want to play that these champions may disrupt. And it, it would be the first pick for the Prager Among Us team. And I'm not sure what do they want to go for, but I think with the amount of enchanters that are really strong right now, we could see that, but it's the Xinjiao instead. It's going to be the Xin Zhao. I do like this pick. It's a strong early on pick. A lot of champions or a lot of players like playing this champ just because it's really, really good and easy to pilot. On the other side, you got the Jarvan pick with the Soraka. Ooh. Love to see the enchanted supports. It's a little bit less boring to watch than engager supports right? with the Leona and the Alistar. At least there's something to watch out for here in the bot lane. Soraka is going to be really, really good. What do you think, TDS? I hate Soraka so much, <laughs> but it, it's a personal hate, not because, like, uh, in my opinion, she's one of the best supports in the game right now. She's really, really strong. Her ultimate change made it so that she's now really strong even against Grievous Wounds. And teams that want to engage in are really beneficiated by this Soraka because it doesn't matter how far you go in with her ultimate, you can have close to a second life, try and engage. The, the thing is, I hate Soraka so much, so I really hope that we don't see that. But as a pig, it's a really great champion. And with a German 4 that will want to engage and force fights, I think that the Soraka can work to try and keep him as, uh, alive as long as possible. And if you have a, a long-range AD carry or something that deals damage from a safe distance, then the Soraka can also work really greatly as a uh, as a um, as a pillar for for the AD carry. And on the other side, it's Prager going for the Seaver and the Rakan. Um, Surprised with the Seer pick a little bit, I think that Seer is an okay to carry, I think that having the extra movement speed will be great for this composition. The problem is, what we will see from the Seer. Is it going to be Lethality Seer that, that will spike much earlier, or will it be the the much more normal build Seer that will spike later on in the game? Yeah, that's usually the traditional type of build where you have your AD carry spike later in the game in terms of yep. doing a lot of damage, and Seer is able to carry a lot of team fights with that power spike we're talking about, right? Also, a really good, I guess, in terms of wave clear, Sivir has that prowess, right? Has decent wave clear, can boomerang uh, a minion wave, and then just pretty much dwindle it down to thin, thin it out. Especially late game, it's going to be really useful when they're playing from behind. Yeah, I think that maybe from behind, that can be a great engage tool, especially because now that we see the two picks from the, the side of of Oasis, it's going to be the Soraka and the Jinx. Even though I said that Soraka is one of the best supports, and I agree with that, same with the Jinx, one of the better AD carries in the later stages of the game, they are immobile. <laughs> if you can get on top of them with a Rakan or the Xin Zhao, it can be easily easy to kill them both. And if you delete both of those champions, the team fighting for, from Oasis can get much harder to execute. So I think that the overall idea from Prager is really good to try and destroy these kinds of champions and try and just make the team fights non-existent for them. Speaking of non-existent, Tom Kench is not going to be played tonight. That's Let's really go. good. I don't, I don't like this champion. I mean, you said you don't like uh, Soraka. I don't like Tom Kench in the top lane at all. He's such a bully, and I'm glad that it's off the map, off the hands of the top laner on their side. You also got Shen Ban, so two targets for the top laner here, who is going to be um, Putney. Putney is going to be the top laner for Oasis Revenant. So let's see who they're going to pilot after those two bans. 
Yeah, and I feel like the, the Shen ban is, uh, is the better ban of the two. Not because some Kenshi is not as strong, but I feel like with the Jarban 4 engaging, having the Shen shield as well as the Soraka heals would be way too overbearing for the side of Frazier. And I think that taking away that extra shield is really important. Now, though, with the Asir, you have already a two man, uh, a two champion, two champions that can carry from the late game from a safe distance, which means that now they need to have something in the top lane that can work as an engager as well, or something that can follow up with the Jarvan or be useful to peel with the Jarvan and the Soraka. Because if not, the front line from the side of Oasis is not that strong, realistically. Even though Jarvan can be a little bit tanky, you really need something else to be beefy in front of these three squishy champions. And we got on the other side of this. Zerath, is this a scripting Zerath? I want to see how much damage they do. Their their team comp still looks a bit squishy to me, TDS. I don't know yeah. about this move, to be honest. I don't know, Chief. We need to see uh, uh, something else in the top lane, maybe a little bit tankier. I'm thinking maybe Orn could work well with this composition, especially because long range engage. But. I'm not sure what else do they want to go with this. I love the Seraph pick though, said. Interesting. So wanting to just throw away this, the Jarban in case he tries to engage in, which I think to a certain degree makes sense. Ooh, Jace. I'm not sure about this. I I'm really yeah. not sure about the Jace pick here. Not because think, it's bad. Yeah, I think it's just that the, the team comp in general kind of uh, takes a turn when you don't expect it to. It's like yeah. it has that safe where it's like it's like going to one location, but at last minute changing that location, going somewhere else. With a set pick over the top lane, you know, PAUA are looking to play heavy into the early game because this guy is pretty six, even ar around six. He's going to lo be looking to do a lot of damage. He's going to be looking to make plays happen on the map. Jace as well, you know, he's really good throughout the whole game. Honestly, I think against Set, he might have a little bit of a problem, but we'll get to that in a minute. However, you, we were talking about the Ore on top. We got the Set, and and what do you think is going to happen here just based on team do, uh, these two team drafts? If it's based on just a pure link phase, I think that Jace obviously should take the matchup. I think that the range advantage as well as just being able to harass as much as possible the set is going to be really important. But overall, team composition-wise, I think that Jace just feels really not that useful in comparison to the set. Not because it's a bad pick, but the, you already have way too heavy of uh, way too heavy carries in the other two positions, and realistically, you don't have anything that can be considered a Mitchell apart from the Jarvan. And with the poke that they have from the Serath, from the Saber, it, it can be really hard for the German to either engage or try and do something without just getting completely pummeled even before a teamfight starts. And that's something that I'm scared from the side of Oasis. And then there comes the set that even though it's probably not the most ideal of picks in terms of tankiness or champions like that, it does something that can deny completely Oasis and it's the, the showstopper, which if he gets on top of the Jarvan and can and doesn't allow the Jarvan to engage in, that means that you pretty much lose any way to force a teamfight on the side of Oasis. And the poke from the Serath and the Seaver can just be way too overbearing to, to deal with. And even if they are able to get on top of them or try and force a fight, there's just still Rakan and Xinjiao that have disengaged potential. So it, it just feels like Oasis has to pray that teamfights go as normal as possible and that the poke is never that big of a deal. Because if not, the, mm -hmm. them forcing teamfights is really hard. Even though they have a Soraka, you are able to poke the Soraka from a safe distance as a Seraph and a Seaver. So it's not that great from Oasis with, with this kind of composition. Well, you know, I actually just want to add something else that just came to my mind right now. Set usually is really good when you can just smash with the Showstopper tank right into the back line, right onto the AD yeah. carry, right onto the support. Jinx and Soraka are ideal to just smash a tank on, but who is Set going to target here out of that lineup on the red side? I mean, I don't think there's an ideal... It's just yeah, I think it's gonna be at that point Jarvan. So There's you can't one. even you can't even afford to um, at that point make your showstopper a little bit more flexible. So I, th I guess that's one point. My other point is going to be the um, having smoke rush here in the mid lane. It was Zerath, right? So by that time, I think Or had that opportunity to maybe counter that mid lane. And in my ideal uh, way to counter a mid lane, it'd probably be someone who could build Lich Bane any champion at that point it could even be echo jungle or it could be echo mid anybody who has that lich bane because you're targeting Sivir, rakan zerath and Zinz, I was going to be a little bit tanky here, a little bit hard to kill, but still, it's not like a prolonged pro prolong fight. Zerath, you have to die from the back. Is a Rakan, you, you, if you could just able to fully combo. Sivir as well. So these are ideal um, champions that you just want to delete with having a lich bane. So with that said, Jace being picked last, I think maybe or... Um, didn't use that window of opportunity. 
Yeah, I think that that's why I was saying that even though the Jace it's not a bad champion, it doesn't work well with what the Oasis wants to have. And I think that, like you're saying, not taking full advantage of the window of opportunity, knowing what was on this uh, on the mid lane and on top lane, because there's instances where you can not throw the lane, but play a champion that just neutralizes lane, but it has much more of an impact in the game. And I think that this this side of voices has that had that opportunity to be able to play that in this game, and just decided to rather focus on the lane and try and get advantage there. The problem is that even if the Jace gets an advantage, if the if the advantage is not yeah. huge enough, there's no real chance that he can utilize it effectively. Because even if he pokes down onto the set or onto the Shijiao, the side of Preachers has better better poke than the Jace has. The Serat and the Sivir, depending in, on Shigo, if she goes the Thalari. Mm -hmm. But the poke damage from those two champions is way, way better than that of the Chase. And it's it's on a much lower cooldown than that of the Chase. Which means that one just one shot blast from the from the Jace may be two rotations from the Serat. And that is such an amount of damage that the Serat that the Jace cannot hope to fight against. That's why I wanted much more something like an Orn, like a mm -hmm. Zion even. Something that if he goes in and has to make the people focus on him. The Jinx and the Aesir will have a, a field a field day because they can then utilize their whole front of the damage to just clear team fights. They want to fight traditional front to back team fights, but with the Jace, it's much harder to be able to execute that. Yeah, I think that's the only option. I think we're both uh, kind of talking about right. The top lane has been uh, taking a little bit of a detour. I guess uh, we could sum up what we just talked about. I think overall, though, taking a bit step back, looking at the overarching picture here of what's about to happen, what about to transpire here, that we're seeing Soraka backline very good. He wants to be safe, wants to keep the Jinx alive. You got the Jarwin for heavy, heavily indexing on the early skirmishes. So maybe they're going to play towards the mid. And Azir does have enough CC for the Jarvan to be like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll probably gank you after six. But uh, other lanes, though, who's... Where is Jarvan ganking? Because there's no stable CC anywhere. Maybe yeah. the Jinx with the... <laughs> if she's lucky, if, it, it's very telegraphed, though, right? It's not like a Morgana <laughs> Q that's going to land it more, more more likely than not, right? So with, with that said, I'm just looking at the CC on both sides. And I prefer the, the jungle chemistry with the Xerath. The Zinzao and the Xerath here. So I think Smoke Rush might have Zinzao prioritizing his lane because he does have that reliable CC. On the bot lane, there's that Rakan W. So I think jungler-wise, it makes more sense for Zinzao to get ahead compared to the Jarvan. In my, that's just yeah. my personal take on this. No, yeah, I think it, it's correct. I think, like you were saying, I think it's probably much more logical to gank the Serat. Not only because they, you have much more setup in the mid lane, but also because he's one of the easier champions to kill since he has no mobility. So it, it's much more ideal to just try and gank him. But looking, like you were saying, looking at the other lanes, Sivir has a spell shield and a Rakan. That can disengage and, and survive by himself. Said has the face breaker as well as the haymaker, which means that he can deny ganks really effectively. And then you're trying to think where is the correct place to try and gank. I think that you can try and go for mid lane and bottom lane because I think that those are the more logical avenues for this kind of for the champions that Oasis has. But it, it really it's really going to depend on what the Japan can do, much more so than what the other champions can do. And if you have to no. put so much of the of the um, commit or no of the responsibility yeah. on the Jarban alone, it's going to be really hard for him. All right. Well, with that said, we'll be right back with the games. This is going to be the first game between Prager, You Among Us team versus Oasis Revenant. With that said, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are at the outset of the match between Prager, You Among Us, team versus Oasis Revenant. But before we dive into the game, quick introductions. Let me do the honors of introducing my colleague and myself. I'm joined here on the casting desk with TDS, and my name is Proof. We are excited to be here. Obviously, this is a different day, a new, new game, a lot of changes to be had. And it just looks like a strong start from already. The blue side, P-U-A-U, they're not wasting any time, TDS, and on the other side, too. Start. Like, I wish they find themselves, because this is such a great start, but I would favor the start of, I think that level ones probably is really good for the red team, the side of Oasis, because you have the level one uh, sand soldiers, and that can those can be really, really strong at level one, even though you don't get the extra, the extra abilities, it's still really good. But on the other side, if you get the jump onto the enemy team, it can be really good as well. But nothing happens. They just leave wards down. They know, though, that the blue team is starting on the on the bottom side of the map. They, they see now Shinjao, so they know that they are starting on red. But soon enough, they, they will know that Jarban either is starting bot side or is starting top side when he goes for the, for the buffs. And, yep, it's just going to look like a standard leash. They are obviously spotted there, so Jarvan, what he's going to do as well, he's, I think, also spotted on the top side on the red buff. Yeah. Nothing to make of it, though. They are starting on opposite sides, so we're not going to expect a clash over the Scuttle Crab anytime soon. It should be a smooth breeze from then on. I, that's what I would think as well, but interestingly, the Jarvan also started with the... Uh... Oracle Lens, which means that he may just change his pathing so that he can try and answer against the, the Xin Zhao. So I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up going for something like that. But like you are saying, I, I think that it's probably just going to be mirror or clears and he's going to go top, uh, bottom, the Jarvan going bottom side and the Xin Zhao top side. Like we said, I mean, anything is it can happen, right? Just like they detoured yeah. on their draft, maybe they could detour in the jungling path and just go somewhere entirely different, right? They could probably yeah. end up mid lane or even just top lane at that point. Um, we see Heavy Poke coming through already in the first phase. It's sub three minutes, so shouldn't be too big of a deal. The lane is being shoved under, but it could be... They could possibly do a freeze here, but maybe not. Um, but yeah, mid lane, let's see how things are looking there. Smoke Rush against the Azir. Moame having to run the TP. No Ignite anywhere on the map besides the bot lane here on um, Among Us Kumate for the for the Rakan. Yeah, logical. Uh, um, maybe you, you you can take as the Rakan the exhaust, but overall I think that this makes sense. Okay, yeah, it's something as uh, small as possible. But yeah, quickly, I think that you can run the, the exhaust as a Rakan. The Ignite is not bad because if you go in on top of the of the Jinx or on the Soraka, that extra damage from the Ignite may turn up a fight. But mm -hmm. looking at the Jinx and the Soraka, they have both heal and barrier. So it should be really, yeah. really hard to kill them. Yeah, obviously, if they heal before the Ignite, it's it's really clutch, right? They have to also time yeah. their heal rights. And then the Ignite is... is a game of inches at that point, you know, it's uh, you barely get kills with ignites. It's not a uh, always a guaranteed kill. We got people disconnecting and reconnecting, but we should be on the way in just a moment. Yeah, it should be really, really close to uh, or, or it should be really soon that we see the game coming back in. But quickly talking, just looking at the state of the mini map and looking at both junglers, the Jarvan went for a much normal clear he went for a five game clear trying to maybe go into the bottom lane especially if this if this bottom lane wave pushes into the jinx and the soraka then he can probably get a better setup for the gang to come through the shinja on the other side he went for a much for, for a full clear instead if you see he cleared three camps on the bottom side and he's now clearing mm -hmm. walls which means that he may take a little bit more time getting onto the lanes but if he if the jarvan fails a gank or it's not able to keep up the pace he may just fall behind to the shinja yeah, we might expect to see that happening as you see Jarvan on this pause. <laughs> you see that they're both actually going opposite directions. So after the end of the day, they're not going to detour like they did in the draft. But as you see, Jarvan does not have a good setup on the ball into gang as the lane yeah. is shoved in. So that's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, they need to get like the setup for this bottom lane to be able to get it. It can be a little bit hard. They either need to heavily push this wave so that it can bounce back. Or the, the bottom lane from the side of, of Prager's need to push this. And realistically, I'm not sure if they will if they want to push it. Like if you see the cannon is that yeah, the lane is, is in such a good spot for Prager's. They don't need to force anything. Uh, 
And we're back with the game. Hopefully uh, no more pauses as uh, things are running smooth so far. You see the boomer here over the bot lane doing... Investing a lot of mana to push back the wave. Uh, yeah. This, low, this is low buffer. Move. But not much, not much. Yeah, the, the side of Raiders just doing what they need to do correctly. And also the side of, of Oasis doing the same, trying to push this wave away. Top of the gate. Oh, Haymaker flash oh. in the top flash. lane. And Putney gets out of there barely alive. What is that? 10, 20 HP? That's Enough. not a lot of HP. 45 HP. And oh, now he sees this out. He's diving. Oh, gonna try his luck, but not gonna happen today, my friend. A lot of flashes invested. That's two down, and Jace gets out of there a lot. The Jarvan missed the knockup up. I, I really like the play from the Soraka. I feel dirty saying this. I really like the play from the Soraka. She flashed in to get the silence so that the Sivir cannot flash or use a spell shot. And then if the Jarvan gets the knockout, that's an easy kill. But they misexecuted this. Oh, wait, Soraka. No flash. Soraka, no flash. Barrier is up though. Let's see if it's gonna be a Probably kill. We'll use it. One more. Oh, the boomerang Ooh. is gonna connect, but it's not enough <laughs> damage. In the meantime, day drop with the top lane now. Haymaker is good to go, and that's gonna be the first blood. P U A U coming up clutch. Yeah, and it's not only the kill. Look at the summoners. This is disaster for the Jace. He just teleported topside, try and and get something in the wave, but. It a, a, a regank from the Xin Zhao because of the wave positioning. The wave is pushed into the set. This is awful for the for the Jace, by the way. If, if the Jace is able to keep this, Jace is pretty pretty much dead in the game. He he pretty much just died. Oh wait, Mohamed. Speaking of dying here, Mohamed, nice size up there. Ooh. The ability he does miss, and you, yeah. know, you gotta you gotta respect when becomes lighting because you will become dust after it hits you. Yeah, Xin Zhao is already a man. He already uses the wind becomes lightning. <laughs> See, Soraka rotating the mid lane here. That's an interesting uh, rotate for her. But She's she trying to she hold up the wave. Yes, yeah, she wants to, but she's taking a lot of damage in return, though. Ooh. You see, Alice is around the corner as well. Just knock up. It could oh, be good. Early no on flash. skirmish, and that is going to be the kill. No flash on the Zinzao because he did invest in the top lane, and he has to pay a price for that one to one. We're back on even Steven. Yeah, one to one, really greatly done. Oh wait. Oh no, this is not looking good. Oh, Putney. He's gonna be walking out that little Yeah, I think he's just fancying himself a lot of these early trades against his set, who does quite well. Yeah, he needs to. Uh, Putney needs to thread the needle a little bit more carefully. He needs to be able to trade damage, but you cannot walk like that against a set, because one face breaker means one trade that you're going to lose 100%. Oh, the bitch. Oh man. I, I hate when, when supports like leave the AD carry in the bot lane and early on especially too because that's a, a very important part of the game right with the AD carry sometimes lane management could be could be annoying. Now you see the control ward is put down there but hold your horses a lot of rotates coming through in the bot lane it could be a oh. fiesta and that's going to start things off the Rakan W TP play as well double B trying to run oh, away they sorry, let that. the support die a sacrificial lem nonetheless. That's going to be one for nothing. Are they going to look for more? Zerath coming down with a poke, but that's not going to be enough. They're just going to stick with that one kill. They're going to be happy with that. Maybe turn their attention to the bot lane, uh, bot side neutral objective at this point. Yeah, it's a really nice kill to get the kill Soraka already on. The Soraka couldn't even use the barrier, and I think that it would have been uh, dumb if she used it. But yeah, that means that it's probably Drake now. First Drake going for the side of Prager's. And a really nice first Drake of uh, capture because the soul can become an important objective for them. So I think that getting that first soul can be really important. Uh, that first Drake can be really important. And also it's one of the best first Drakes to get. The, the Ocean Soul is one of the better ones for laning phase because of all the easy stats that you get that you typically don't get this early in the game. Still an early game like you said there, TDS. Seven minutes on the clock. Two to one, favoring slightly. A, s a slight lead for PUAU. Obviously, Oasis can scale up into the late game. They have a Jinx. They do have that Azir to provide some wave clear. On top of that, the passive is really, really clutch too. We got over here shadowing happening. Alice is fancying himself for a nice gank possibly here. And he is spotted though. And Dom does not have flash. However, this could be bad. Cataclysm oh. through with a showstopper right out of that one. But is that going to be the kill on the desert? He goes with 20 HP surviving that imminent threat. <laughs> what a clutch play on the side of Set. If he gets the face breaker, he could not even get a kill. 
as they're about. Oh, wait, the ultimate? Oh, oh there the it kill. is. Retaliation at its finest. Zin Zhao meets his enemy in the jungle and gets the best of him. The Zerath coming in clutch there too, helping him secure that kill. And the attempt on the top lane, it's not a bad idea, but they end up paying the price, not being able to kill the set, and this is one of the things that the set does that well. And we talked a little bit about this. The harshness to gank and try and kill a set because of the Haymaker and the, fa uh, the face breaker and the Showstopper. Even with Flash, he escapes onto his sword, and then they get two kills because of the movements from the Serath and the Xin Zhao. Great play by Prage, really uh, understanding how to answer this, and they got everything and didn't lose anything. Yeah, I think it's four to one. Just all right. At... All right. With that said, just a short heads up. There's some technical issues. We'll be right back. So don't go anywhere. All right, we're back. That was a short break, right, TDS? Yeah, it was short enough. It's just to recalibrate ourselves and make us get a little bit of a breather, especially with how with how the game has been going. So pretty standard, I think. I feel like. Yeah, now the scuttle bot size scuttle crab is secured. Charm oh, is going to come through. That's the quickness we're talking about with the W knockup. This could be three v two. This could turn violent very quick. Who is first to display though? There it comes the boomer on the oh. on the front line, taking a lot of that damage while Alice gets back to safety. No play to be had. Haymaker doing a lot of damage there, and they find it. Jace has to respect the set. Time and time again, we have been seeing that not having oh. cataclysm over the wall. The flash, that's a huge and gets the divide. He didn't Ever get the kill. Through, but he did not get the kill. It backfires to them. This is not looking good. Oh, no. This is not looking for girl. OR, they're going down left and right. There is it. The flash over the wall, double B, back to safety. So that was a 2 4 nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> They didn't even get the flash. I think they only they only got the flash. Sorry, from Boomer, and they got the ignite from Among Us. Yeah, talk about disaster. That that play was forced by the Jarban, and he doesn't get anything. I'm surprised that he went for the flasher. I think that the idea it, it's a little bit way too overforced at this point because the follow up from the Jinx is not that good. I think that she had to flash to be able to follow up. The Soraka realistically doesn't deal that much more damage, but if she's close by, she can do the heals, but she wasn't clo in close proximity. And the Azir didn't have mana, so even if you get the engage, it's not like you can get a lot of value out of that play. Also, really great uh, spell shield by the Seaver, denying the damage from the Jarvan, and also getting mana back so that she can respond. Top lane again. So far, so good for the set. Up! A yeah. lot of CS, man. Almost that two 30 level ahead. CS. Yeah, two levels ahead. 20 CS up. And he's looking real good to, to dominate the rest of the game. Jace, however, does have that, you know, fallback plan later on in the game. But this is level 9 set. You don't want to disrespect him. Haymaker coming through with the flash on the return. Oh, flash is okay. traded instantly. No kill to be had. Yeah, a little bit aggressive to say the least. But I, I like the idea, especially from the set, that it wants to keep on getting the advantage as... Uh, as as hard as he can get it. Oh, mid lane, no flash. No flash, Mullen's gonna get away with the Tron. Oh, <laughs> knock up the and Vampire's divide, yeah. but that's not enough as you see the Xerath coming down heavy with the damage and that is gonna be the kill in the mid lane and nice and easy for PUAU. Yeah, and this is something that I didn't talk about when I saw the draft, but I loved it so much with the Xerath. Easy to put, to execute setup for his ultimate. If you get someone that can just put, uh, stun uh, someone in place or put him in such a bad position that the Seraph can get full damage from his ultimate, you're doing such a good job because that means that the pick potential from your team imp improves way too hard. Oh wait, mid lane. Jarvan is taking a lot of damage, very low on HP. The damage will pour on in. Zinza on their deterred will be instantly traded. The Herald is there as well as you see Muami around the corner picking up the remains. Finally saves that turret, barely. How much HP is that turret? 79 and going strong. 
it's two out attacks because of the extra resistances, but it, it should be a first turret secured in the mid lane if they are able to put the pressure there. I'm not sure if they will be able to, but I think they should be able to. We'll see what's about to happen. Cooldown on the Soraka as well. The Soraka ultimate was used there. So, wish. You're not going to have any more wishes for another 90 seconds. On the other side, though, that's a Rakarn mid lane roam. They're now going back to the bot lane. And I think Boomer has been holding down 1v2 quite well here because both supports have been proactive on the map. Yeah, but that's uh, that's one of the things that the Seaver does. The, she's in a sense like the Israel that can you can left her weak side, and realistically you don't lose much. She has great wave there. She has safe ways of farming with a Q, and she also has the spell shoot to deny the gank, gank potential. So it's not oh, like here it a comes wave. the Rakan with the quickness. Oh, it's rooted seven. in place though. Silence from Lil Sejong. So I guess you know you got to go for those right. More pressure, the better. But oh, that really means good. that Rakan was not gonna have an engage. Mid lane turret goes down, it's history. Smoke rushes on 1v2, trying oh. to put some damage, but trying to outsmart the opponents. He's just oh, outnumbered at this point. Here comes the poke, <laughs> and Zerath is good for one. Alice is now under a lot of heat. He is subject to punishment. Are they gonna dive this one? Yes, oh. with the flash and best, and that's gonna be double for the mid laner. Smoke rush on fire. Somebody put out this guy. Yeah, he may not have mobility, but he has the ability to hit every skill shot. He hits everything onto the Azir, and then hits everything onto the Jarvan. Great play by his smoke rush, commits his slash, but gets a double kill and a turret. Great play by him. And on the bottom lane, maybe putting a little bit of pressure. No, I don't think they're going to go for the gank, but they get yeah. second Drake from the game. And it's so much of a huge advantage for the side of Prage because they don't only open up the map in the mid lane. They have a, a Sarah that is so far ahead, he has Magis, and now you also secure the, the second dragon of the game, which puts you closer to the soul win condition. Greatly played by Prayer, honestly. You know, soul win condition is, is really, really good too for that. I'm have to gonna go ahead and, and, and say, well. PUAU, you know, two, <laughs> I mean, one turret, right? That They got the first turret and now they got two Drakes counting on top of one another. 10 to 2 scoreline and searches us with 6k goal lead. This is their game to lose at this point. Yeah, it feels like it, they have everything to be able to run away with this game. And it, it would be surprising if they end up drawing it, but there's always the possibility. But right now, they have been playing so effectively, so well around the map. I haven't commented commented much on this, but I really like Amoka's move, movements around mid lane to not only support the Zerath, but put, give power to him. That will be... <laughs> Oh. There it is. Flash is invested and alt for alt here on the bot lane. But Boomer, can he get away from this? And the answer is yes. In the meantime, though, there. play over the top side. Rakan Charm and Quickness is oh. there. Putiny gets that ultimate from Soraka, but it's not enough to save his life. That's going to be yet another kill in the pocket of the oh, set. Furthermore, going to force out the divide. Emperor's divide here. Moami. Try to oh. make his way back. Oh, he's really flashed. under the turret. Yep. Yeah. It's a way back to safety with the flash invested. He should be good. Oh, he uses heal here. But looking at the difference, it's probably turret for turret, but turret plus a kill for just turret. So and unless Boomer dies. Here. Oh, this is a oh they missed. Five. They actually did miss. Boomer has another maybe three seconds of death rocket. Everything is They're going away. <laughs> They're missing everything, but maybe here he, he comes away, maybe they can proxy farm here under the turret. There is going to be the attacks. Jarvan is on uh, offensive. That's a huge boomerang. Oh, going to force shit. out the heal. Boomer is really buying enough time so long. <laughs> later, see you later. Double B finally closing out that kill. I think that if they. Oh, wait. Mwame. Uh, oh, Mwame not walking. Man, this mid laner okay, has caught a break. <laughs> You're putting always so under much pressure on the bird, man. Feel kind of bad there, but... Okay, gotta give praise to the side of, of o Oasis, because that bottling dive, yes, it took long, and yes, it was kind of a scuffed at a point, but they get the kill on the Seaver, and I think that's what matters the most. They were able to get the turret and the kill, so at least trading equally, but they are still really far behind when you see the gold. When you see the gold, it's not that bad. I mean, it's bad. Who am I kidding? I mean, at this point, you it's know, at like 17 I said, minutes. <laughs> at 17 minutes, so they not even Baron, not even Soul. So uh, those are big objectives to contest on the side of um, OR. But you know, here yet again, Jarvan is looking for a gank, and not 
really making any of it. So a lot of failed attempts besides that one gang in the over the bot lane, something for them to ride home about. But here you can see another skirmish might break up, might break out. Um, Among Us here, Kuman has been really proactive on the map with the, the roams, with the ultimates. Like, oh. I'm just saying that right now. He goes for the quickness on the Jinx and does oh, get the silent. There it is. The Cataclysm thrown down under the turret. It's not looking that good because they're taking a lot of turret aggro. Score is scorched to pieces there, fortunately. So Double B is going to get that kill. Second one for the Jinx. If the Jinx gets a lot of kills, they might be able to get back. Alice looking for more on the offensive. Boomer is going to be safe and sound. That's nothing more than just a slap on the wrist. We're back at 11 to 4. Still, though, you know, though, you know OR got something for themselves this time around. Yeah, and look at top. They, they're getting top lane turret, so it's a lot of gold influx. Oasis gets the kill on the Xinjiao, but they lose two turrets for this. So not a complete victory away. Oh, Here we go. Showstopper is going to put an end to that. Alas, he's without his teammate. He's going to juke him there. Dolmax is going to just go over the wall there. All three right, interesting here. stuff. This 3v1. Oh. Oh, we're going to make that a 3v2. That's one for... Nothing yet so far. That's finally gonna be the trade. Seth goes down. Arctic Boomer here is in a bit of a hot water. Back behind the wall, down they go. So, bunch of kills are now going in favor of OR. If they could make this happen, maybe they could climb back into the game. Yeah, and not only a bunch of kills, but a bunch of shutdowns. I think that's the most important part <laughs> the fact that they are getting those shutdowns. Oh, wait, Soraka. Yes. Soraka is gonna kill. force out the barrier, yeah. but that's not even gonna be enough. Small crush is good for the kill. See, I, I don't want to sound biased, but I'm happy that this rocket died. Just saying. Overall, but really nice pick by this rocket. This rocket has been left alone on the side lane, just pushing waves, getting farm. And even though his impact on the map has not been as great as it was in the, in the previous 5 minutes, before 15 minutes, it's still such an important fact that he's getting the lead, because he's still going to be a menace when teamfights actually come. If they are, if they are teamfights, he's going to be a menace. Also, Mountain yeah. Drake up and no setup from either team, but the first one obviously is the Xin Zhao because they have position on the uh, on the bottom side of the map. 5 0 and 2 Zerat so far has a perfect game. Something to be proud of. Unless I just jinx it right now, of course. But that means this is going to be the third Drake for them over onto the blue side, which is really, oh, really good. And now the Flash forces out the engage. Alice Reball now without the ultimate. Cannot set up for a nice team fight. They have to respect that and back away. Like you see, they're hugging the turret right now. On the offensive, here comes Zerat. Smoke are trying to find some poke and just look at the amount of damage they're doing. Putin already half HP. Not looking that good. I think this is the third time that we have seen Alas going for the same engage play. Oh. It is the AD carry, you gotta go for it. But Sivir has like so many escape tools that it's nearly impossible. Zerat <laughs> ultimate throwing down that damage, does find the poke. One more could have done it, but Lil Sejong is too quick on the feet. Here comes the Siege. Is a fight gonna break up though? Ah, throw up. This turret, I think. Yeah. And that's gonna be turret. Goes down the pocket of PUAU. They're still <laughs> on the offensive. They're baying for a blood. They're punishing them if they make an overcommitment. And that is gonna be a huge amount of poke. Scorch is gonna follow up with a heavy engage. He jumps on the target. You see the quickness already used as well. Great Emperor's Divide bringing their entire team on there. And everybody's going down on the side of PUAU. But wait a minute though. Set is putting up a huge team fight. No. He's the last one to be gone and down. That's gonna be the triple on side of Muemu. OR coming up huge here on that ace. Saving the game, five men Emperor's Divide to just push everyone into the base and be able to get a really nice team fight, fight team fight win. Importantly, he gets he gets them on a position where Jinx can get full damage out of her rockets. And I think that that's why the fight was so in favor of the side of of Oasis. Even though it was really close, it said almost makes that a fight that the side of Preach can win, but it didn't matter at that point. They were really low and they tried to force so much. I think that I understand that you're really far ahead and that you have the confidence and the ego to try and push farther than you actually need, but they need to remember that they are a Seraph severe based comp. You have to, you depend on hitting the poke from a safe distance. If you walk way too far forward, that can happen. So I yeah. think that this is a nice warning shot for them to not overcommit again and just be mindful of how they need to fight and win the game much more uh, logically than what they tried to do just now.
That, that's one of the best Emperor Divides I've seen, hands down. Like, yep. this mid laner has been super clutch now with that ultimate. Now, you got to be careful right next time. He could replicate that. He did it once. What's stopping him from doing it another time? As you see, the channel is going to be super interrupted. No back for Alice. Smoke Rush putting out some poke. I'm pretty sure Smoke Rush is, like, topping the charts with damage at this point. If he is not, I'd be surprised. The, the amount of time that he has hidden champions with his Q, with his poke damage is nothing to scoff at. Even his ultimate, I think that he has hit almost every uh, uh, every shot of his ultimate. A uh, bear, I think five or six. Mm -hmm. And let's see what's going to happen. Rakan working for the quickness here, but Ooh. a lot of damage to be found on Scorch. He's taken low, already half HP, a zero around the corner, maybe looking for the flank. It's a good thing to play a zero, a little bit from out of the vision of the enemy, so you can surprise yeah. him with your Emperor's Delight as well. So we're seeing that happening here, or the attempt of that happening on the side of OR. 16 to 11, 23 minutes on the clock, three Drake counts for PUAU. They're looking to take on the top side, inhibitor turret, but maybe not for long. Here comes Emperor oh. That was a, uh, an altruistic one, but not really. Oh, the country. Look at the amount of damage <laughs> to be found here, and the damage is pouring on in. And double B is going to be history, Alice. We've all now the second one to target. Going to get knocked oh, up with that Rakan. And maybe trying to do something under the turret. Haymaker's not going to find any target. The showstopper will. And that is going to be the chaos, ladies it. and gentlemen. That's going to be it. A huge ace in dead. favor of PUAU. <laughs> Yeah, they get at least a kill on the Boomer, but yeah, they tried this time around the same formula that worked in the previous team fight, but this time around it doesn't work. The Emperor's Divide is not that clutch. It's even sent in the opposite direction, and this was a much easier fight to fight from the side of, of Rage. But this is their, their, it's a 24 minute game on a composition that I thought was going to maybe take a little bit longer to, to have an impact, but realistically, they were so far ahead. The Serath was so huge. And the movements that made the Serath be so huge were so well done by Preach. They fully deserve this win. And uh, based on how they play this, I wouldn't be surprised if, if this ends up being a tool, especially because now the side of, of Oasis need to consider if they want to ban the Serath or not. Yeah, the Serath, I think, was a problem. Speaking of that, though, like I said, you know, the Jarvan did have a, a harder time ganking lanes, and I think that was what my, I want to point out here. Of course, Zinzao, you saw there was stable, uh, there was a reliable CC in the mid lane. There was a good amount of CC in the top lane. You didn't even need to go top lane that much, but mid lane, 7 1 and 5 on the Zerath. Smoking Rush is looking to be, I guess, taking away this series by storm, right? Doesn't add the fact, it doesn't subtract the fact that Scorch, Scorcher plays played through the mid lane quite yeah. well, but I think the uh, Smoke Rush just held his own quite well against Izzy. Yeah, certainly. I think that they did a really good job in playing around what they needed to play around. I think that Malmes Azir was the victim of great team play, and he showed that he can play this year effectively in the later stages, but I think that at that point it was harder because their composition is a composition that needs time. It's an Azir and a Jinx. You don't yeah. expect to carry with Anasir and Jinx by 25 minutes. That's also the reason why I think that they needed to play either the early game much more slowly or have better impact with the Jarban. Sadly, it didn't happen with the Jarban. And the top lane just continuously died and died, which makes me think that the, the, the Jace pick just wasn't what it was probably what the side of, of Oasis wanted. And also, I'm surprised that they didn't try and focus a little bit more on the top lane. Like, we saw a couple of ganks, but I think that Jarvan should have probably started going topside really, really early on. Even yeah. before going bot lane. Yeah, he but started maybe going bot lane. He, yeah, yeah, he started going bot lane. That was his prio. Um, obviously, didn't accept, expect it to be such a one-sided early on game between uh, yeah. Putney and, and Domax, right? So, we'll just see how the second game goes. Obviously, junglers have been... At least Jarvan plays great from behind. We know that. So imagine how great he will play from ahead, right? So LS, we ball. Um, I think he could play great if, if his teammate just maybe draft a little bit more CC where they set up for him early on yeah. and, and enable him that way. So we'll see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, with that said, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back with the second game. As you know, Prager, you among us, did get the first game against Oasis Revenant, but we still got some more time to see what um, is in store from the side of the red team, which is going to be Oasis Revenant.
All right, well, uh, we took a little bit of a short break, and we're back. Pre-made, dominant, week eight. Prager, you among us, team versus Oasis Remnant. Of course, we saw how game one went. My name is Proof, and I'm joined here with TDS. TDS, let's see what's, uh, let's pick about your brain here on the draft. We see Ziggs ban, we see Camille ban. On the other side, though, PUAU this time are going to be on the red side, so they have more They're counter play ability. The Filios, the same bans on them because they don't want to deal with this Marksman and Ariel yeah. Arielia as well. But let's will we see, see what uh, they set to draft. Will we see a Surat ban or something from the first game banned away? Yeah, that, there it is. I was expect I was thinking maybe we'll see it. And I think this makes sense. There's not a lot of players that play Surat. So I think that just going for an easier matchup in the mid lane would be much more ideal. So this makes complete sense for me. But overall, the rest of the bans are the same from the first game. Not much adaptation in there, but now the first pick is going to be important. Will Oasis stick with the Jarvan or try and go for something else? Maybe they, this time around Dame taking the Xin Zhao like we saw the first game. Or mm -hmm. will they try to go for another focus in another lane? Yeah. It, it, to, me, so. to me, I think uh, also uh, on the stream, I think it says the opposite names. I think Oasis is supposed to be on the blue side. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and with the Zen Zhao pick, it's going to make me also question, like, okay, OR, this time around, they saw how important Zen Zhao was. Now they're going to pick yeah. it on their side with the Zerath Ben and Camille. Of course, it's kind of similar how they approached the first game. But I want to add on top of this with the Zen Zhao Ben and the Jarvan. Yeah, there it is. PUAU. They're stealing, like, the first picks. They're trading it. Now, Leona is going to be our... Yeah, it's a little bit of a different uh, play style, right? Leona is going to be our support. It's a bit different. Let's see who OR decides to pick here. But what do you think of the pick so far? Yeah, I think that for for Preach, this is great. And I think that they still stay true to what they did in the first game. Because for me, it wasn't that the Xin Zhao was better than Jarvan. But it was that the Jarvan had set up in the lanes. The Xin Zhao had set up in the lanes to be useful. And with the Leona, you can do what the Xin Zhao had in the first game. Which is set up for the Jarvan to come into the lane. So I, I think that Preach is staying, is staying with that mindset. Staying with the mindset of early, earlier game. But... Oasis is going for a Lucian Nami bot lane. I really there like this. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that it's the Lucian paired with the Nami. Not with any other support. I think the other support, if it's not an Enchanter support, it has to be either Alistar or Braum because the passives work well with the Lucian. But apart from that, you have to play, to play Lucian with an Enchanter support now because of his rework and the change of his passive. And I think that this bot lane can be really, really strong if played correctly. Yeah, and Nami has a lot of disengage potential, right? Yeah. Leona always wants to be in your face, and Nami, um, it's it's more of a skill shot at that point. So um, high high level gameplay, you got to be on point. If you miss your cues, if you miss your stuns, it's gonna be a little bit of a miss, uh, hit or miss. But Leona, on the other hand, just looking for the Zenith Blade and to attack the ADC. Lucian does have a getaway plan as well. Galio is gonna be picked. Ooh. Oh my goodness, there it is, the Colossus. It, the mid lane, I love seeing Galio, man. It's been such a long time I haven't seen a Galio game, and then hopefully this is going to be mid lane. Yeah, I and right. this, I, I think it's probably mid lane, because uh, I, yeah. I don't think we're going to see Galio top or Galio AD carry, but who knows? Uh, there's teams that like to experiment. But uh, the, the, the side of Bridge going for a 
Right now, with this three picks, it's an easy to execute press our composition. It's Jarvan goes in, Leona follows, and Galio follows. And, and it's an easy to execute composition that needs to have a really high, a high DPS source. Be it from AD carry or from top lane, but you need someone to follow to have a lot of damage to follow up. Because if not, the composition, even if it's easy to execute, can fall flat in terms of damage. Yeah, we got the mid lane here, you know, Smoke Rush playing on an entirely, possibly, allegedly, right? This is allegedly Galio, we don't yeah. want to make assumptions right now. Um, Smoke Rush from Xerath to Galio, it's night and day, because Galio is not going to be readily as dashing out a lot of that damage that, you know, um, Xerath is able to with the poke, with the ultimate, the long range. But Galio, what he does provide is a lot of CC, a lot of team fight, hero's entrance, he could just go to the river and then ultimate bot lane. So a lot of that early on pressure once he reaches that level six. Of course, CC to CC per capita, I'm favoring PUA use comp so yeah. far, but however, I'm noticing the improvement that OR made from the last game because now they have a little bit more reliable CC with the Lucian jump when it becomes lighting. He has a possible um, engage tool better than Jarvan's early game in my opinion because Jarvan, it plays that similarly, but I think Xin Zhao has easier time to execute. Nami does have that CC there as well. So a little bit more CC coming through more. I love to see that. Yeah, I think that at least we're seeing adaptations certainly in terms of how they can correct from what happened from the previous game. Also, quick thing, it's a Tristana ban. The the, the blue one is a Tristana ban, which I think makes sense, especially because how much uh, damage the side of... of or, or how, how much damage, no. How much CC the side of Preach has which means that the Tristana can follow up pretty effectively that CC, and she does a lot of consistent damage, so I think that it makes sense. Yeah. And also, the Swain is not Swain, it's Soraka. So, <laughs> a, 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 a couple of problems, Prodrop does that occasionally, but Soraka going, coming in into this game, is it going to be AD carry Soraka then? Or, well, not AD carry, mm -hmm. but as some dude okay. Soraka. Yeah, like the, the carry ball lane. We'll, yeah. we'll see what happens. Um, Swain here as well, picked. Um, yeah, OR definitely. Let's see with the Atrox going top lane. I love to see that heavy bruiser who has the best cycle of walks. And, and Leo Ooh, has the most boss walk. Cassio is going to be our mid lane pick here. Okay. And a great pick, stuff. by the way. Yeah, good CC, good damage output, great for kiting. And the Miasma, the Miasma for me, this game is going to be one of the most important and valuable cooldowns in the game. Because that alone can deny anything that the side of Fridge wants to do. The Miasma can deny the engage from everyone, and it can also provide enough support, uh, enough control so that your team can deal damage. So the Cassiopeia to me is going to be really, really important. But Fridge last picking the Trindamir. We have heard about the Trindamir mid lane and his power, but this game I think it's probably going to be a Trindamir top lane. The, the, with the way that this that the other champs were set up, I think that it has to be a three number top lane, and this should be a really fun game to see. It's strange, but fun. Yes, it is. It is kind of a strange game to see here. You know, Oasis definitely have a traditional marksman, whereas PUA you don't have a marksman here, so it might be a little bit of different. But Trindamir is looking to split push a lot. Galio, you got for the team fight. So four v five wise, when you're not accounting that Trindamir is in the team fight, we're just split pushing. You're going to have that 4v5 still hold out their own because Galio does decent amount of uh, damage to the back line if he, with his uh, axes with tornadoes, right? It's a little bit of long range. Swain, decent wave clear. Jarvan, he's going to look on for that fight. Uh, but, you know, obviously, it, it's, uh, it's just going to be Just in case, it's not Swain, though. It's Soraka. It's not, oh, it's Soraka. Okay, so I was mistaken. It is going to be Soraka that, that you mentioned in the bot line. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I'm war And the, if it was Swain, I would be much more... Confident yeah. in the four before, but Soraka lacks damage in comparison. Like she has heals, <laughs> but the yeah. the Galio, the Galio and the Jarvan are going to be the main forces in terms of damage in a four before because, like you're saying, if Trinamir is not there, then the four before it's going to depend on the Galio and the Jarvan dealing damage. And my worry is that if they don't have enough damage to kill the Nami or Lucian or Cassiopeia, then the long fights are really are, are really easy for Aces to win. Realistically, like if the fight lasts. At more than 10 seconds, Oasis should have an easy, a really easy time to fight because the, the team, the side of Breach depends a lot on the Rs. Yeah, I'm just at this point is what what, what junglers can find in this game to, to make yeah. plays happen. You're talking about Xin Zhao, right? He does have, I think at this point, you probably want to be targeting bot lane and mid lane. Uh, mid lane, reason being the Cassiope ultimate is huge. 
Galio can get away, so you gotta watch out. If you could get the flash, it's it's really good to get the early on flash from Galio, so it could repeat gank multiple times to provide pressure, um, because it allows him to be hugging the turret and not roam with his ultimate, which is huge. You don't want that to happen. And also, yeah. Zin Zhao in the bot lane is is a prime target because Nami sets up for uh, great ganks if if she plays her cards right. Obviously, right with against the Soraka, who's very very squishy, does have healing. But we're talking about a bot lane of Leona and Soraka. So you just, at that point, all you have to do is focus on the Soraka and you're good to go. Zen Zhao does have yep. that toolkit to do so with the CC that Nami provides. So I'm, I'm excited to see this game. Um, with that said, though, TDS, let's go, like, because because we saw what happened last game, right? If we could learn anything from that last game for Oasis Revenant, what would it be to improve on this game? I think it, it has to be playing according to what you're trying to do on the other side of the map. Because we saw Alas going towards bot side really early on, and Putney not respecting that fact and mm -hmm. just dying randomly in top lane. I think that yes, the wave was bad, but he's the way the way that he played the wave management and the way that he played against the set uh, allowed for that to happen. So I think that you need to to play according to where your jungler is playing and understand that if there if he's on the other side of the map, you need to play much more respons uh, much more carefully and with much more responsibility. But and I, I, they are, if they are able to adapt to that in that regard, I think that they will have a better game because if they focus on the bot lane like you're saying, which I think would make a lot of sense, it's Lucian Nami against a Soraka Leona. If they are able to to get on top of the Soraka, she should be dead. But the the, the thing is that if they are not able to adapt to that, then it, it won't matter if you put the Lucian ahead or if you are able to focus on the Lucian because then we will see a repeat from the first game and Jarban will or the side of Rage will just focus on going onto the top lane, killing Putney repeatedly. And he can, and he will be a non-factor in the game. Yeah, I mean, Tridnamir wants to have you gank his lane, so he's able to shove the lane under the turret. Once he gets that first, uh, once he gets that first turret, it's at that point a snowball yeah. for Tridnamir because now he could go other places, can invade your perma, invade your jungle. So Zin Zhao has to really respect that. That coming from the side of Tridnamir is is an actual threat here. Like we saw the set, who's also really really good in terms of. It's a different play styles for for top laner. Obviously, set is is a heavy bruiser. Like he wants to fight you all the time. Trindamir is not really doesn't care too much unless you just mess up in lane. If you're gonna if you're gonna TP bot lane as Atrox, you better watch out. Trindamir might take your turret. Yeah, and I love that you bring the difference in play styles because it feels like it can be same in the way that both champions realistically punish mistakes from mm -hmm. from the enemy laners, but the way that they do it is different. Set punish a mistake when you miss uh, miss position or misuse the wave and while Trindamir yeah. punishes you when you leave lane to try and help the other side or if you try to go way too far deep far in so yeah it's going to be really interesting to see uh, the difference in playstyles in, in in that certain regard and like you're saying i really hope that they stick with Trindamir just going to the side lane because yes he can be valuable in fights but we were talking about how the 4v4 from the side of 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 bridge is not that bad realistically uh, even if they don't kill anyone, if they are able to keep them long enough in place that they cannot respond to the Trindamir, that's also another way to win this game. Yeah, there, there's so many avenues to, to success here for, I think, both teams. I'm not going to lie and say that, yeah, you know, OR this time around. I think they, they did a great job at drafting. Um, Prager on the other side, I think... Could have been better. I think the Soraka is a bit of an interesting pick here. I think they want to have the Soraka for the heal. Obviously, I last game. Here. What happened? I, I would have loved Kaisa instead of Soraka. Because yeah, Kaisa even too, right? Even Swain. I mean, I thought it was gonna be. So, I, I was fine with being Swain. I mean, I'm I'm fine with seeing it. But if they were gonna go with Marksman, then yeah, right. The Kaisa is, is really good to go there as well. It works really well into the diving to the backline with Leona, especially. In that sense, you might as well even switch out Leona for Rel, because that's like the classic duo, Rel and Kaisa, right? So, yeah. Love seeing that, but obviously, I think Prager have something else planned for us tonight. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll be right back with the second game between Oasis Revenant versus Prager. You among us team, don't go anywhere.
uh, welcome, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do quick introductions here. We're at the outset of the match between Oasis Revenant versus Prager You Among Us team. So that's going to be exciting. The second game, right? They should treat it as a best of one because guess what? PUAU are now one and oh. With that said, quick introductions. My name is Proof, and I'm joined here oh, with TDS. And it looks like they're going to go with the Predator. Galio oh, with the Cena oh. Blade. It's an early onset. It's an early slaughter. First blood secured by Smoke Rush. That was beautiful. I, I just can't describe how... I I'm always excited for level 1s, but this is great. And I love that they utilized one of the uh, indirect buffs to Galio in the previous patch. In this patch, it's the Predator buff. Now, because it's much more instant, you can just utilize it as soon as you go into the enemy jungle, like the Galio just did. The W used, the W used. It's really hard for the for the Nami to run, and even if she flashes, yeah. I'm not sure if she can escape from the from the Predator W combo. And then the follow up from the Ona, even though she had to blow flash and ignite, it's still completely worth. First blood for the Galio, for us, it's the only. The, if if it went to the Trina I think that the game is it's way way better for Prage. But overall. Great first blood, great first, uh, great level one, and I love to see teams that are able to pull this off. Yeah, and, and look what's happening on the map right now. I, I like the Jarvan's pathing a little bit more than the Zinzao here, because Zinzao is going to possibly end up top or even best case scenario mid lane. But on the, other side, on the other side, Jarvan has the option to go to bot, to go to mid, set up for a gank. Smoke Rush is taking a lot of that damage from the Cassiope. He's taking a little, little bit half it. Half he has four pots, missing. So. Yeah, has four pots. That's interesting to, uh, take on that with the it's Predator the and start. the Dark Seal. Yeah. I, love that. I really love that adaptation from a small bridge. He may he may take a lot of damage here though from the yeah, from the bad poison. Oh, he needs to be careful. Oh, has to watch out. Sure. No flashes. Oh, flash is oh he missed. Yeah, there Ooh, but it he is. escapes. Yeah, he's he's good to go. But still, you don't want to walk up to Cassiope if you're not prepared. <laughs> You're not prepared to take that damage. He was a steel level one when he walked in, so yeah. I think that's not respecting that. Oh, Max. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh there oh. it is. Solo Bolo, Domax. This is like deja vu what happened first game when he was playing set. This time around, he's replicating that play for play. Does have that. Ghost and Flash, so didn't even need to burn any of those. I feel that everyone that has played, played against Trinda Mirror once can feel this. They, they can feel this pain because that is something that happens against a tree number specifically. Oh, man. You don't expect to get killed and boop, out of nowhere. Yeah, I like how the, the, the sound effect you did there. <laughs> I don't know where you just, you just drop. Yeah. Um, it is 2-0 and a running start for PUAU. They didn't have this last game. It was a little bit closer. Oh, okay. Can they add another Predator no that's on? It's good to go. Can they find the kill? And yes, they will. Smoke Rush with the second. Yeah, and, and Scorcher just comes in to get an assist because he wasn't needed. That was pretty much a solo kill by the Galio. And I was going to mention that the, the trade in flashes in the mid lane was way worse for the Cassiopeia. Because Galio has four pots and the Cassiopeia blow every pot to try, uh, uh, that she had to try and survive. Oh wait, Potney, not again. Potney oh, now ghost. has a little bit of a company there. Two's a crowd, three's a company. So the other way around, Domax is oh. going to have to use the Ghost. One auto attack away from going down. Yeah. And that yeah. is going to be the story of Domax, the guy who dominated top lane. But soon was dethroned. You see Muwama on the retaliation. A lot of TP is burnt there. Oh. So both mid laners not going to have that. Meanwhile, those Scourge getting caught out in the jungle. No man. Double B, the Zinfit is good to go. And there oh. it goes. The Wombo combo secures the kill. Boomer is going to get that one. Yeah, and better movement in the bottom lane. There, there's a really nice attempt in the gank in the top lane. I really like that the Jarvan goes there, that the Xin Zhao goes there. But on the other side, and this is something that we were talking about, the responses in the in the other side of the map from the side of Bridge are oh, always feel like are better because even though they lose something in the top side, they get something yeah. in bottom lane, and they will and they will get the jungle. So they don't lose that much in the top side. They still get a kill. They get the, the bot side jungle, and they also will get the push and deny onto the Lucian. They may even look to get the Drake when it responds in 10 seconds. I'm not sure that they will, but it's a still really nice responses by the side of Rage. Oh, oh another knockout, another taunt I mean, goes. It's a lot of damage. Rush, but guess what? Alice is going to walk in, but they're not going to know that Jarvan's on the other side of that wall. Luckily, though, they don't have vision there. Maybe they can surprise attack them. 
Here comes Scorch Blaze, looking for a possible setup for a play in the mid lane. Smoke Rush is going to push that lane in the meantime. I think it's bad after that, though. Maume is really is low, so I, I don't think they're going to force that. And also, I think that Preach would rather not force a fight because bot lane will not be able to respond since they were coming out of base. And I, realistically, you don't really want to commit for that play at that point. Now Jarban has back; he already has Iron Spike Whip. They may look to try and get this Drake a, a little a, a little later when the Jarban clears, but overall, I really think that just controlling yourself for that play is ne it's necessary for the side of Preach. I think a 4-1 is an early, early lead. Sub 10 minutes for AU, PU, AU. Right, they don't have, I guess, much pressure besides that Galio right now that's 2-0. Yes, the Jarvan is proactive on the map, but the early lead is in, in, in the hands of Galio, and we know that Galio is, is mostly looking to play like more that supportive, but still does a lot of that AP damage throughout the game as well. Yeah, the, the, the thing with the early lead is not that if he can use it on the mid lane, it's if he can use it elsewhere. So yeah. we need to see that the Galio begin moving around. Now that he has ultimate, moving around with the Jarvan ideally to get the, the full power from the ult. Oh. What's happening in the top lane? Oh, here we go, Putney. Alt used, and there it is. Oh, alt alt for Alt. There it is. The trades are happening. Scorch does not have Cataclysm oh. just yet, but that's not even needed. Cataclysm not going to be used, and he has to flash. Away from that wind becomes lightning. Zin Zhao putting a lot of that pressure over the top side of Among Us. Crewmate taking a lot of fire. Uh, he is Soraka. subject to punishment. Soraka is getting punished for overstepping there a little bit. Damage Whoa. is coming good. Damage will pour oh, in. Double B getting good. caught out again. The Nami doing all that she can to protect the ADC. But oh, double B oh, yeah. to no avail goes down. Even Nami was Whoa. like, let me take matters in my own hands. It's not going to happen tonight, little Siege. I'm going to lose your AD carry for nothing. No, Are you going to get away please. alive? Yes, at least get to keep your life. Yeah, the one that didn't have mana for Zenith Blade. If not, Nami's probably dead, but 2v2 win by Soraka Leona. Oh, Moame. <laughs> oh, Moame. Oh, oh, wait. Gonna get, Whoa. They're going to engage on Cataclysm and Hero's Entrance. The Ooh. double ultimate used to get that kill. Smoke Rush on fire. 3-0. Yeah, and... Healing the, I, I love that they are putting pressure on this Cassiopeia repeatedly because Cassiopeia is going to be one of the main things that can disrupt the game from the side of Rage. Yes, the the, the Aatrox may be a bother now, and the Trindamir is not in the spot that you wish for. But realistically, you can control uh, Aatrox much more easily than you can control Cassiopeia with a Miasma. So I think that putting pressure on the Cassiopeia is much better, and also opening up the opportunity for now Galio to move around, because this is what we were talking about. He is 3-0, but now with kills, he can try and move around in, in the map, and I think that's much more important. Oh, wish used. Interesting. Now we've got an early objective on our hands too, it is 8 minutes, this is not the earliest Drake pick we've seen and nobody is really even bothering with that buy side neutral objective, it's like just sitting there like a statue, but Double B is pushing that lane, so maybe we could see an early pry over the bottom, he comes into play, setting up for a nice play over the bot side with Soraka and Leona, this is getting dangerous, Double B again, deja vu for him, Scorch plays, is looking to get that kill, he's good, oh. he's good for one, and now oh, the second one's gonna be Little Sejong, he just gets away every time with a sliver of HP. Just that good. Oh, Domax. It's just that good. Top lane. Shenanigans have a level 7 versus level 7. Oh. And there it is. A solo bolo again. A revenge. As he um, does not even use Undying Rage. There's nicely done for the top laner on the side. PUAU. Yeah, it, I think that, that Domax realized that it's great when you can fight on equal footing against the Aatrox. Not when he's level 6 and you're not level 6. Or below 50% health. That's really, really important. And he wins the fight really effectively. Oh, wait. Rush getting ganked mid lane. When becomes lightning, does not land. It's just Small a crush. Key. Yeah, just a slap on the wrist there, mid lane. Ten minutes almost on the clock, and we know what that means. Somebody ought to take the Drake off the map, but nobody is willing to do the dirty work. Yeah, but now the game, even though it has a lot of kills, I feel like it's kind of slow to a degree, because we see kills in lanes not much. Oh, wait, actually. Uh, overstepping Mame. by Moame, just gets knocked up, oh. sent back to the fountain. He gets low and he will drop. Jarvan with the kill. Second one for him on the board, looking good. But wait a minute, oh, Smoke Rush, you don't want to hang out too much on Alice. Does have the Run. flash. Oh. Is he going to oh. opt out to use it? Does oh, he use it? Does not land. The wind becomes lighting. Oh my goodness, what a what? blunder there on side of Alice. How'd that even miss? I mean, he was maybe off like 
Right. I don't know how off that was. He was a little bit wide, but Scourge Blaze on the offensive. As a watch out, he does get the knockup. The all used for Alice defensively. Wait, actually, yeah. Can he get away the knockup from Galio? It is good. That is going to be the kill, but guess what? They get collapsed on here. Putney here now on a 1v2. Make that a 2v2. Malama is here. The Kakos is used. Scourge Blaze getting a lot of damage on him, and he will drop. Such a play on the side of Cassio. Or meantime, got a bot lane. Culling is used. Boomer taking a lot of damage. He will drop as well. Mid lane, a lot of dropping and topping and toppling from the top. They're not going to stop. Double B. Can he make something happen here among us, crewmate? And that is going to be the double. Finally, silver lining. 6 to 12. OR versus Pre UAU. What a game, TDS. This bottom lane is one of the most random lanes I've seen. Like, one second, it feels like they are winning so easily, the Leona, the Zoraka, and then they die. <laughs> like, they, I don't know what is happening down there. I really like the pickup from the Executioner's Calling by, uh, from the Lushan, by the way. It makes complete sense to deny the Zoraka. Also, I hate the Shirelia's battle song. I think that the Zoraka should have gone for a... For a... Um, what is called a... Uh, the healing, the the other healing item. I, I don't remember the name quite now, but the moonstone. I think it is. Yeah, moonstone. I think that that would have been better, not because the the movement speed is valuable, but because you don't need the movement speed realistically. Oh wait. So we don't wait. Here comes Heroes Entrance. Enter Galio into a fight Ooh. and a skirmish. He will take it away. Smoke Rush with his third, or rather fourth kill in the game. Three, one, and six for the Jarvan. And now they're going to look on to take the first Drake in the game as well. 13 to 6. PUAU looking very comfortable, very confident. This is again their game to lose. They are ahead. 4K goal lead with the mid lane Pryo. You see the plating not looking that healthy on the side of OR. Top lane and mid lane likewise. Yeah. But uh, Trina Bear will just take this like it's nothing. He just hits red. Even with, with uh, oh wait, Aatrox there. Oh, oh and Solar Flare is not good, but the taunt is. But a little too late for the taunt to channel through his double B, trying to do some damage oh, on the way out. Right? But guess what? Cataclysm is available. Is it oh, going up? And there it is. Lucian gets caught up. Doing a rock and a hard place. Wait a minute. He's doing a lot of damage. He does really? retaliate. And it's good for the one. Double B still on the offensive. Smoke Rush well, does not have mana. Flash. And the calling comes through. But Wish does not do anything. Soraka is just at this point a supportive player. Oh, and a flash no. away as well. This is becoming bad to worse. They are subject to punishment and the punishment will be the flash on Soraka, as well as the two deaths that we just saw. <laughs> yeah, ju just a quick thing. That was one of the... I, I, I really don't want to say dumb, but that was one of the... Oh, wait. Ooh. Oh, wait. No max. And he under the turret, diving with the dying rage. On dying rage, okay. <laughs> Does not push further with that. That was almost too close to call. Yep. Okay, just going a little bit back then. That was one of the dumbest plays I've seen. I don't know why Jarvan thought that that was going to work, especially when when Nami didn't use ultimate. They tried to engage here, but they don't get it much. Nami didn't use ultimate, so the re the disengage potential by the Nami is so easy at that point, and you're locking yourself up with Cataclysm and their turret. So yeah. realistically, there's no chance that it's going to work. There's no follow up because Galio doesn't have Hero's Entrance, and the Leona already used her ultimate. And the Nami is not even close. Uh, the Zoraka is not even close by. So you're just Ooh. trying to fight for the sake of fighting. Yeah, a little oh, bit too risky. Nice. Pony under the turret is going to be a solo kill. Not really. Moame. Menial task of clearing up the wave. Moame on the other side again. Trying to look for this Galio. I don't know why she want to do this. Because she, every time she does, she gets over overextended and gets and caught. Dies. Dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I feel I feel kind of bad for Moami. He has been trying to play this game, but he gets collapsed as much as possible. And I think that he's trying to respond a little bit too much to what uh, Smoke Rush wants to do. Instead of one doing what the Cassiopeia wants to do, which is farming, just staying co Oh, Moami. Here comes a Predator See? play. There it is with the taunt. It is good to go. 3v1, and that's going to be history. Oh. Like we said... You're too uh, overextending there, Moami. You don't want to push it this time. Just hug your turret. Hug your turret and call it a night. Yeah, he's doing plays like he has complete vision control of the map. When in reality, you just... Even if you know if you know the positioning of the Galio, with Predator, it can be really hard to engage this. Oh, wait. Uh, here comes it's the John. 2v2 breaking up. A fight breaking out here. Scores does find the Cataclysm. A nice getaway from the Lucian. Heroes are just not going to find anybody. For the knockup, here comes Alice, retaliation on the other oh. side of the map. In the meantime, though, dive for dive happening. Docs, it's a 2v1, though, gotta watch out. Smoke, Smoke Rush, Rush taken very low, getting low, and he will drop. 
That is two kills for OR. They're swinging it back. They need to kill Nami. <laughs> they are focusing onto the onto the Lucian, which is not inherently bad, but he has mobility. He can escape so easily. The Nami doesn't. The Nami was stunned. And if you yeah. just force your if you just force as a Jarban, you explode her and then can look into killing the Lucian. But Nami survives. She still ha has all her spells. She has Moonstone completed, which means that fighting for a long time makes them survive longer. I feel like Preach has just been not not playing around what they actually need to do. They're uh, a press our dependent comp that can't get denied by one champion, by two champions yeah. pretty much. But the cha the other champion is not present. You need to kill the Nami, and then we and then you can move into the rest of the targets. But realistically, they are fighting this really sloppily, and it's costing them yeah, it kills is. that they can get. Uh, the, the, the coach is gonna have a field day with a water view here. Yeah. Just, I think they, they do a water view. There's so many mistakes, and, and some of them we're not even talking about here. But it just looks like. A 6k gold lead, or what it was, 4k gold lead, now it was only, yeah, now dwindling to, what, 2k? And a little bit less oh, than that now, though, Predator in the mid lane. Cash over this time, gets the retaliation on the ultimate, buying some more time! The Zenith oh. blade is not good, a lot of damage on Smoke Rush, that was too close to call on 1v3 almost. Sorok in the back line does have the ultimate in just a couple of seconds, that was a bit risky. Yeah, trying to force plays. I think that forcing the plays into the Cassiopeia is not bad, and they, it, she doesn't get, end up getting the kill. But I feel like you need to have, you don't need to force those plays. Instead, you can just push wave, get vision down in the enemy jungler. You get the setup for the next raid, and if they just walk forward, you get much more avenues to be able to play fights. Oh, top lane, top lane, Putney. He's been having actually a good day so far on the trades. Now solar flare oh. catches out. Lil C John, this is a three. Oh, the cancel. Now looking with the TP play finally happening right now. Gali with the predator used as well. Here comes the taunts. In the front line, is Leona gonna get that kill? Alas, we both is buying some more time with the Zin Zhao collapsing on the flank. We comes at truck with the play. <laughs> Cataclysm catches Muame and he is history as we come to the second part of this fight. Scorch oh. plays is history as well. Putney still doing a lot of damage. More damage on Smoke Rush. What he does not have doing? a getaway. Oh my goodness, at last, staining this one around with the double. There it is. OR. They are not gonna stop until they get their revenge. Yeah, but in the meanwhile, Trindamir taking top lane. I'm not sure if he will take this top lane turret, but Dragon going in favor of the side of, of Oasis. Really nice fight by them. But this is started from a really great setup by the side of, of Rage. And this is what we're talking about. Get put the push in the mid lane and in the bottom lane. Control the vision in the enemy jungler, and you can win fights really effectively. And they, w they were winning that fight until they didn't. Pretty much. That That's what happened. Great teleport by Padni, by the way. But... When you get the kill onto the Lucian at the start, and then can move into killing the the, the Nami, which was able to escape away so much. Nah, he can run away. But I, I think that it's way too over commitment from the side of Prage when they know that it's a 4v5. I think that it's fine forcing the fight, but when you know that it's a 4v5, you need to cut your losses short. And the Soraka was it should have been able to escape, but she tries to force the fight. Oh she's and here comes a possible pick. Oh she's alive. She barely gets that one out of that. Moame didn't have to burn the ultimate, but you saw the calling was used. So Double is not going to have the ultimate for the meantime, as everybody else is coming to the mid lane on the side of PUAU just to protect that turret. Soraka had the base. She was taken very low. But no objectives on the map so far. One for one in terms of the Drake counts. Uh, 34k, 32. That's 2k gold advantage for PUAU. Nothing too big it's not still you can't just say oh are are losing this one it's yeah. such a close game so far they're fighting tooth to claw and every every fight every skirmish that breaks loose um blue team has someone in the rift here over the top side and maybe a oh, possible fight is gonna break out alice oh, oh, to get oh, early flash the zenith played oh. nice call to sidestep that Galio is not going to find the taunt. Does he have He's the E though serious, here? Bro. Yes, he does. He's good to go for the dino oh. wave. Is going to survive. Make, make Zin Zhao survive that fight. So nice and easy. You get that Herald use as well. It was a useful Herald, not going to lie. We've seen better he though. Got a turret. Yeah, it was a good one. Decent. Yeah, at, le at least the, the, the Herald from after 14 minutes. If you get a turret, I think that you get a lot of value, obviously. Oh wait. Positioning here for a fight, maybe? Huge flank, maybe possibly PUAU. Or, I guess, entertaining the idea for a flank, yeah. but the disengage was called on the side of OR, so nothing to be had of that. They saw the potential, but the utilization from the 
the Shirelias was not that good. They tried to force the fight, but don't get the the, the effect to, on anyone apart from the Zoraka, so they cannot force the fight. And I think the idea wasn't going to be that bad, but it, it's just still that kind of thing where you need to be careful how you try and threaten the fight. If it's on a choke point, I think that it's okay. It's fine because then then you can get much more value out of your ultimate. But if they don't, if they overcommit and don't end up getting any value out of their ultimate, uh, their ultimate, the fight can just turn way too chaotic and way too favorable for the side of Oasis. Again, you know, the top laner trainer hasn't had the best day to split push, but at least the turrets over the top side are now down, so they can focus other places on the map. Scorch Blaze here just doing the red, as you see, Alice, they're roaming to find some players who are overextended as Boomer is going to notice that with the blue trinket. I believe it went down, so now the Scuttle Crab secured for OR. They could play around this Baron, but they don't really have to. It's only 21 minutes into the game. There's other objectives to be had as well. Scorch what? Blaze is maybe going to set up for a gank here or a possible skirmish, but yeah. we'll see what Well, happens. quick thing we, with Oasis' Baron, oh wait, actually. There oh, he hit it? it does kind of, he does hit it, the tidal wave used there, but is it going to be enough to save the carry? The answer is barely, Captain no. is used, Hero's Injury does knock up, it's good to go. Alice gets under a lot of heat there, oh. subject to punishment, and oh. there it is, Muwami turning this around bit by bit, just one day at a time, one kill at a time, oh. but <laughs> so he's nice. going to be the only one left alive with Atrox, they're doing a lot of work to bring Bucky. it back. Boomer on the getaway, Sonya's is used Smoke Rush, rather the stopwatch. He's just going to eat his way out of that one. Aishox is literally 1v3ing at this point. Here comes Woman. Can think, they though. turn this one around? No, it was too late. One for one, at least on this trade so far. Arctic Boomer. Mommy. Get that other kill. Mwame doing so much damage. Yeah, and once again, I, I think that the fight was really good for Preach until it wasn't. They commit way too hard under the turret for reasons unknown to me. They, they had complete... They won that fight so effectively. They got the kill on the Lucian so easily. Then they moved into killing the Xinjiao. You kill those two targets. You can now move into the Baron, in, into the Baron area to bait yeah, the could, remaining yeah. three members or secure your Baron. Like, you have a Trinamer. He kills objectives. Oh, wait, Mame. His subject to punishment is low. will drop. Oh. Here comes Galley. This will turn violent very quickly. Down. <laughs> Double B is and history. TP well. play, you just TP right in the middle of there. Atrox has to flash over to the title wave as well, securing him. Means he has a safe trip back home. This Scorcher Blazer trade. has been really good on point for with Baron, the Baron, no. You're running for Baron. Yeah, they could just do Baron here with uh, the carries are down at this point. The only one alive is going to be the... Um, top lane, of course, and the drum on the side of OR. At least that's a 50-50 spy fight, but that's neither here nor there. They're, they can't even access the Baron Pit. They don't have zero access to the Baron Pit. They're just going to trade, yeah. I guess, objectives. But Baron definitely takes the cake. Yep, certainly, especially for one of their... Much more so than any champion. It's the three the mirror that gets full value out of this. They will be able to finish this, but I'm, can they run away fast enough? I don't know. Okay, all to use. Burn. The oh, ultimate yeah. does catch Solar Flare, does catch Alice, but here comes a huge flank. Catacolism oh, no. is going to be used here if he <laughs> wants to, but it's not going to happen. Alice trying to sidestep his way with the flash, trying to get away, buying some time at this point. Let's see if the Zenith player is going to connect. The thing is, there it is, finally gets knocked up and drag out fight there. Finally, Soraka with a kill, 4 to an 11. We see the usefulness of the Soraka with the pick. P-U-A-U looking to take on the game with the Baron, maybe open a base, open the base, crack open the mid lane. We yeah, don't know yet, is, let's see what they opt out to do. The problem is the lane setup, like they, they only have realistically opened the top lane and the, and the mid lane. The bottom lane is now getting pushed by the Trinomir, which is going to take a little bit of time before they can actually get value out of this. But the top lane is not is not pushing in favor of the, of the side of Prage. And the mid lane is the easiest lane to defend because it's in the middle of the map. Which means that the value from this Baron buff, especially because they were the Xinjiao was able to buy enough time, it's getting less and less in comparison to what it can potentially be. And the time that they may get to push into the base will be really it will be less than it, it could have been in reality. Yeah, double B now, you know, did have Somewhat of a resurgence in the game, right? But now oh, it's oh, 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 okay. getting engaged on. 
There it is, Whoa. astonishing cataclysm, nicely done there, but now Hero's Entrance on top of that, the Wombo Combo. Oh, the John. team that we know oh. that do a lot of damage to Cassio, but trying to buy some more time, getting Age of the Zenith played, and now they're both <laughs> history. There it is, the last one alive is going to be Atrox and the Zin Zao. Zin Zao goes down quick, just like that, bites the dust, and Putney is the only one left alive against a four-man stack with the Baron. They're looking on to knock down turrets. Yeah, this time around, they super commit, but because there's no one close, then I mean, oh wait, Putney. Oh, Man, Putney, no. Okay, can, can he want to be three this? Nope. Unlikely as he goes down, that's the A's, possibly the game. They can go for a they finish a here. Well, uh, Lucian and Nami are up. Maybe not, but they do have a Trinomir. So maybe they think that they can pull this off. Nah, yeah, they, the yeah, they are not going to happen. Five seconds on Cassiopeia, Correct. two seconds on uh, the Zen Zhao. So they're just going to take a quick reset on the Baron with the, uh, with the inhibitors down. They're putting themselves quiet up there to, to close out the game, right? 51k to 43k, that's almost 10k goal lead. So with that said, we could, we could easily say PUAU have a solid grip over the game. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, at this point, at least, it is the case. They have opened the base, they have the cold lead, they still have the Baron buff, but it's, yeah, it's, it just disappeared. And they will now have almost complete control of both jungle, ja, uh, jungles uh, from the enemy team, because they have opened up the tier 1 turrets, which means that they now have much more control and much more space to be able to go into the jungle. And this is going to be really important, because with mission control, going for picks or go, committing for fights can be much more easily done in the, in the bottom lane we could doing what he can do. <gasps> They're setting up for, I don't know, play here maybe. Smoke Rush does get the knock up on the Atrox. You gotta be oh. careful. Atrox on the offensive. They're looking for here. Tidal Wave is used but does not land on anybody. You see Alice trying to fancy himself for a win becomes lighting. He does get the Yuna. jump on Among Us. Crewmate on the getaway side sling step. By the Leona, they're getting very Look low. They're kiting him quite well there. So now we'll or have to kite away. They're like, okay, we're, we're playing kite for kite at this game. In the meantime, though, Dom fancies himself for the turret and the inhibitor in the bot lane. So this is not really worth it for OR. They lose heavily. Huge blunder for them. And they're going to cost, it's going to cost their, their inhibitor at this point. Yeah, the thing is that now with everything that they blew, now the engage potential from the side of Rage can be much better because they have every R up. They have every ultimate this uh, available to just go in and fight. There it is, another inhibitor. All inhibitors are down. Only turrets are going to be Nexus turrets. And you see still the UAU. They're not letting go of the base. They're still hanging out here. They're drinking their coffee. They're sipping their tea. They want more. They came here for the win. As Alice, they're interrupting their recalls. So that's, I guess, what you could do on, on side of OR. But now, every lane is going to be pushed in. You're talking about Winions on three lanes. So they're going to get choked out at some point. Winions with a Trindamir. So yeah, it's yeah. not he only... Need the team. Yeah, pretty much. If you leave the base open once for this Trindamir, it can just mean complete, complete destruction for the team. We'll see what transpires here. They're buying some more time here. They do have the Cassiopeia for the wave clear, at least double B at this point. Kind of fell off, you know, was doing good. But, you know, now is struggling a little bit to fight against the team comp of PUAU as Lucian is getting caught out and they're really heavily focusing on him. Now they're indexing on more objectives. Okay, they're going to secure this bot side neutral objective. Meanwhile, I, I guess that you, sometimes you got to stop to smell the flowers, right, when you're on your way to, to victory. <laughs> I That's think this has to do with with the cl near close throws that they were doing previously in the game. They are trying to be a little bit more respectful, maybe, and and understanding that if they throw here, it can be a really nice a really nice opportunity for the side of Oasis to just completely come back into the game. Especially because now with the super minions funneling in, they're getting a lot of free gold. And if they get win a team fight really heavily, they get Baron. They are able to defend base. Then Cassiopeia all of a sudden has more items, and she can destroy you. But Baron buff being secured now by Breach, I think that with this they may be they may look into yeah. now when just just making double double sure you know that you're gonna get the game. You're gonna have everything that you need, all the win cons in your favor. Although it's just stalling it a little bit, but still playing yeah. it safe is always good. They're gonna get that huge reset off the Baron as well. 
more gold, more items, finishing off their full builds. Level 18 is not attained on anybody just yet. The closest one to that is going to be Dom. So I guess they're not even at full, full build. You know what I'm saying? And still, this game is 29 minutes. They did take the objectives rather late on the dragon. So nobody was really bothering with that. Maybe that's where we're seeing this kind of a prolonged game. But it is 28 to 17 with almost more than 10k gold lead in the pockets of PUAU. Yep. <laughs> it's it's way much more prolonged than we would have expected, especially with how early the previous game ended. It was a 24 minute game last time. And this time around, they are taking much more of their time to control the pace of the game and be able to win. But I think that with this Baron buff has to be the, la the, the last push, especially with yeah. three waves of super mean. Oh, the last answer. Here comes, wait a minute, they pulled the trigger on the other side or unexpected. Oh. Here comes Hero's entrance. Is it going to be enough? The answer is not really. <laughs> one person, Lil Sujang, is going to be history under the turret. They go. Dom with the huge double. There it is. Putney gets silence under the turret as well. On the other side, though, he's toying with his prey Ouch. and has to smoke rush and with the seventh deep. kill in the game. That is going to be game, ladies and gentlemen. PUAU clean sweep here, and they're looking for more 2 0. Oh, they are victorious. Yeah, and by the way, the first game, I feel like was a little bit much more dominant, but this time around is still really well played. They they are a li they they do commit way too hard sometimes, but I think that that makes them much more willing to go for plays and try and take advantage of what they have. And I think that that was shown when they went in in the mid lane to try and get kills, and they were able to pull off. Yeah, you don't always win your battles, but it's good to know you fought, right? So we are... Definitely could uh, use this game as a learning experience. I think also a lot of mistakes were to be had on both sides for this game, especially, right? Yeah. They're going to have a field day when they do the water view, I'm sure. Um, there's a lot of improvement to be had. Gank times, recall times, overextending a little bit, not really kind of, not really respecting the enemy when you should, especially with a Predator Galio. That was underestimated, and I think they miscalculated how how good that could be, right? Or especially yep. the mid laner getting caught on multiple times, but not to, not to also demean their performance, but they also did quite well to get back into the game. We saw that Cassiopeia really wasn't tilted because if anybody was tilted, they couldn't be performing this good. And and I think Cassiopeia did a lot of, a lot of damage, as you can see, check out the charts. Um, there is Atrox too, you know, was holding out his own. But at the end of the day, somebody has to win. So it was going to be, uh, pray jury you among us team and they make it happen yep they played effectively they make it happen they keep their unbeaten string if i'm not wrong yeah see i uh, know they they are six, okay they, it's not unbeaten but they they certainly keep their their winning streak and playing it really effectively they are certainly a team to look at but also oasis like you were saying i think that they tried as hard as they could they are playing really well they, they were playing really well to try and answer. They still are missing a couple of steps. But I think that they are a team that, if they are able to cover some of the weaknesses, will be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I think maybe the rematch between these two teams, Oasis Revenant, definitely looks strong enough to take a game away from Prager U Among Us team. So I think uh, this shouldn't be a missed opportunity to learn from this game. Obviously, I had so much fun casting it alongside you, TDS. And my name is Proof. I guess, uh, any any closing thoughts here before we end the stream? Uh, the only thing would be that both teams played with really well. I think that both should be happy with what, with how they perform. Not because losing is fun, but because even if you <laughs> lose today, it's not like you're missing playoffs yet. So, And I think that's the much important picture. So take what you can get from here and look for a, a, in, a, into the important point that it's playoffs. I think that's the most important thing. And mm -hmm. that, I yeah. think that's what I did. Yeah, another thing, I guess, one more thing to point out is we never got to see that Aphelios. I don't know why yep. it was banned twice in a row, so something to look out for in the next weeks. Let's see if um, Double B gets to play, I guess, his ace champion, ace, ace marksman, which is going to be Aphelios. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be signing off and on to the next week. This was Pre-Made Dominate Week 8, Prager U Among Us team versus Oasis Revenant. Hope you guys have a good night.